I'm Pablo Gallegos from Traxa, and today we are going to start with a series of interview videos of two different persons involved in Dimitar projects. The first interview will be Kevin Dulin from TSSG. Hi, Kevin. Hi, how are you? Hi. Uh, can you tell us a bit about your organization and your involvement in the Dimitar projects? Yeah, so um, my organization is called the Telecommunications Software and Systems Group. Uh, based in Waterford in the south of Ireland. Um, we're, a, we're an academic research organization and we cover the full research life cycle from basic research through to applied research and to commercialization as well. Um, I, my role in the organization was I'm the director of innovation. Um, so my particular focus is on our EU programs and then our commercialization activities. Uh, I have a co-director in, in TSSG, his name is Sassetran Balasubramaniam, and he's our director of research. Um, and he focuses primarily on, let's say, the, the more scientific, fundamental research moving towards uh, applied research. We have about 100 people in the organization, and we were established back in 1996. And um, I suppose we've been in European programs since I think FP5 actually, so quite a long history of working in, in EU programs as well. And in the matter, what is your involvement? So yeah, so I'm I'm the coordinator of the Demeter project. Um, so I suppose I was the guy responsible for putting together the original uh, proposal uh, with the proposal team and submitting it and, and securing the funding from the European Commission. Um, <clears throat> So within Demeter itself, then my my main role is is looking at the administrative coordination of the project. So that's making sure, you know, all deliverables are getting submitted on time, running project management board meetings, um, liaising with the European Commission, representing the project in various different uh, international meetings, particularly in Europe, uh, and trying to promote you know cross project collaboration and things like that. Uh, I also have the, the nastier side of the business, which is trying to, to chase partners for, for budget reports uh, and mm -hmm. things like that as well, just to make sure that the project is running according to plan. Okay, so can you tell us about the Demeter project and what it hopes to achieve? Yeah, so Demeter is, um, well, the name Demeter stands for, the, it represents the Greek goddess of agriculture. Um, the project itself is a, a large-scale pilot project um, focusing around the areas of IoT and um, interoperability, I suppose, at a data level. Uh, we're an agriculture technology-focused project. Um, we're trying to essentially join the dots along the supply chain for agriculture, as to say, from farm to fork. So in, in today's environment, you'll see a lot of different technology solutions deployed along various points of the agriculture supply chain, but these systems don't typically um, talk to each other. So quite often, you know, useful data and information and services are, are lost along the way in the in the supply chain. So what we're trying to do in Demeter is, is you know, pull the interfaces from all these various systems and pull the data uh, and connect them together at a data level in particular. Um, first of all, so that these systems can talk to each other. Um, and then the second thing, which is just as importantly that we're doing within the project, is we're running a set of um, what we call pilots. So a pilot for us is essentially deploying a, a suite of technology, uh, hardware and software, in different sites around Europe to um, prove the interoperability of the various different elements that we're pulling together in the agricultural technology system. Uh, and to verify that they actually work, and then to talk to the real end users, i.e. the farmers, um, you know, and local advisory groups and so on, about the results of the project, and, and to, to understand the benefit that, that organizations like that can derive um, from the project. So we have um, 20 different pilots uh, spread across 18 different countries um, in the project. Um, and they're, they're across multiple different areas related to agriculture. We have things like animal welfare, we have things like uh, energy management or water, water management, um, you know, smart logistics, uh, we were looking at vineyards, pest management and so on. So we, we've, we've quite a broad um, 
set of pilots. And, and the reason we have such a broad set of pilots is we want to be able to demonstrate our, our core technologies in as many uh, different areas um, as possible. Okay. Um, well, well, what, in your opinion, are the biggest challenge for the project? Um, there's a lot of challenges. Um, first of all, is that the size of the consortium, I suppose, is in itself is a challenge. We have, um, at this time of recording, we have 60 partners, but we have an additional one or two coming on board through an, a project amendment, which is going to be approved uh, quite shortly. So even just rallying a, a group of, of, you know, very intelligent, hardworking academics and industrialists and so on, um, and getting everybody to kind of steer in, in broadly the same direction is, is quite a challenge from a, a coordination point of view. Um, I suppose the second major challenge is to, to develop, really to develop solutions that end users actually want. Um, quite often it can be the case that technologists and, and you know software developers and so on can come up with solutions without first having identified a particular problem to be solved. That's why we see it as, as critical to involve our, our end users for the project um, from the outset. So in, in that regard, we, we have a suite of about, I think about 6,000 farmers that are engaging in the project, feeding in requirements and so on. Um, and they'll be participating and, and looking in on what we're doing in our, in our various trials. Um, so I suppose they're, they're the biggest kind of challenges um, that we have in place. Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are the main achievements of the project today? Um, so we started in um, September 2019. So we've only been running a few months. Um, the, I mean, we have delivered a number of deliverables to date, things like our project management plan and you know our data management plan for the project. Um, but I suppose more importantly, we've, we've had deliverables um, such as our, our initial set of requirements um, that we've gathered through, through Work Package 5, actually, in the project which is running our, our, our pilots. Uh, and that's a substantially detailed um, requirements document, again, pulling the requirements from all these different pilot clusters that we have running across Europe. So even just producing that document as a catalog of essentially what the agricultural community wants uh, from technology across Europe is a, is a substantial achievement. Um, we've also put a lot of effort in more recent months into, you know, things like our, our agriculture work, or sorry, not our agriculture work, our architecture work. So the software architecture that's going to be able to connect all these different systems together is, is well underway towards the, in, in development. Um, and we also have uh, a lot of work ongoing looking at the multi-actor approach that we're employing within the project. Um, so the multi-actor approach is, is a very important aspect of any EU project and it's becoming more and more prominent in, in, you see it a lot more in EU calls for proposals and things like that, in that the expectation is kind of like what I said already, we don't just build technology for the sake of it, but that we engage multiple actors from across the, the supply chain to understand their wants and their needs um, from a technology point of view and from the, from a quality of agriculture production point of view uh, and so on to, to make sure the project is building um, what they'll actually need. Um, so, I mean, they would be our main achievements today. You know, we have, we have done a number of publications as well within the project, which is quite good because, you know, to be able to produce publications um, while, it, while this is an innovation action, so there's less research and more, uh, I suppose, integration of technologies, it's, it's, it's a good achievement to get some some nice publications out early so we can start disseminating our, our results out as well. Um, I suppose they're the main achievements. At the moment, we're gearing up now towards um, launching what we call our open calls as well, which is very important. Um, so essentially, open calls or our cascade funding, as it's also known, is a mechanism whereby the project can bring in additional partners, perhaps, or we can bring in uh, new pilot sites and we can give funding to, to new organizations that aren't already in the consortium to engage heavily with Demeter to take out our technology and try it in, in different contexts or indeed to be able to contribute new technologies and solutions into the project that we can run in some of our, our trial sites. Um, so we hope to launch one of our, our first open calls around uh, late summer uh, this year. So if you watch our website, you, you'll see a lot of details around that as well. Um, 
I suppose just a note on, on the, the benefits that we hope to, to secure for European farmers um, from the results of the project. Um, there's a lot of talk at the moment about things like you know the European Green Deal and sustainable farming and so on. Uh, and we see Demeter as a significant stepping stone towards you know meeting some of the requirements of the Green Deal and helping farmers with sustainability and you know higher quality production um, on their farms with potentially less effort. Uh, and more automation and things like that. So all these different kind of systems that we're building will will, will help substantially in, in those different areas. Um, you know, for example, in, in our water management trials, we're looking at you know how much water is needed for the crops. Are the crops do they actually need to be watered or not? And how much water is being using uh, is being used, and we can predict when more water might be needed and so on. You know, to try and conserve water usage. Um, that's just that's just one example, but there's there's multiple different technologies that farmers can benefit from, and again, that's why it's important for us to run our, our pilots so that we can actually show the value of the technology that we're developing uh, to these farming communities. Um, we also hope the benefits will actually extend beyond um, Europe, and we've included the the World Farmers Organization as a partner in the project, um, so that they can help us disseminate our results uh, globally. Uh, and that that in itself is a challenge as well, because you know the solutions that might work uh, in a European context mightn't work in in the US or might work in Africa or India, for example. So we'll also be looking at how to, I suppose, package our results and the technologies and the documentation to make it applicable to a, a more global audience as well. Okay, and um, the last question, um, one I don't like to do, but. Uh, has COVID-19 had any impact on the project? Well, I hope in, in years to come, when people are looking at this video, they go, what was COVID-19? <laughs> and it'll be a, a distant memory. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, we're, we're living with it. It, it has, um, I suppose it has a couple of impacts. Um, uh, and I, I can't be at it first by saying these impacts are being managed within the project. But I suppose, first of all, from a, a consortium point of view, um, and you know, from a, developing our deliverables, our software, and our architectures, and so on, um, pretty much the entire consortium now is, is working at home. And you know, it's, it 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 can be difficult, I suppose, for partners to to work in a home environment. So there's a potential slowdown um, of work being done within the project as a result of that. Now we are going through a process uh, internally in the project at the moment of actually cataloging all those types of potential impacts. Um, so that we can go back and talk to the European Commission and to our partners about you know what we're going to do to, to mitigate those particular impacts that, that are going to happen. Um, on, a, on a more broader view, though, the, the impact of COVID-19 is, is, is going to affect things like our pilots and our trials, because certain pi pilots that we're running within the project are, are built along you know typical agricultural uh, seasonal cycles and so on. Um, but because COVID-19 is, is, is widespread in Europe, um, for example, some of our technology providers may not be able to actually physically go and deploy their technology solutions on farms um, at the present time. So that can have an impact on the timing of our pilots, um, which again is something we're doing, we're looking at within our, our risk analysis to see how to, to mitigate against that. So I suppose that is another effect of, of COVID-19 and that it, it could potentially slow down the rollout of, of certain pilots in the project as well. But, you know, I suppose everybody in Europe is in, in the same position, not just in Demeter, you know, that we just have to kind of deal with it and, and look, try and look at the best solutions to overcome the, the COVID-19 impacts, really. Okay, so thank you very much for taking your time to answer this question. No problem, you're welcome.